captain. Brace for impact. Hello, 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 Davey Portman here from Up Next, postwrestling.com, Stitcher, Google Play, Apple Podcasts, iTunes, Podcast Addict, wherever you find us, welcome, hello, and yes, people, we are going into deep impact, but I can't do it alone. I am joined with my co-host this week. We've been talking a hell of a lot of impact recently. It is... The interview king himself, Mr. Andrew Thompson. Andrew, how are you today? Very, very kind uh, introduction from you, sir. I greatly appreciate it. Glad to be uh, on the, 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 the inaugural episode of Deep Impact. I guess so. I, I guess the other two were kind of like uh, little teasers, Try little runs. tasters. And yeah, yeah the, the inaugural episode of Deep Impact. Con- con- congr- congratulations on on the first episode. I'm pretty sure this will be uh, m- m- many uh, successful episodes to come, and, and this will definitely be one of them. Hey, as as long as Impact's keeping my interest, and I got nothing else to do on a Tuesday, this is going ahead. <laughs> We're going forwards with this. Here we uh, go. Yeah. So, uh, Andrew, it's not been too long since I've spoken to you since Hard to Kill on Saturday. But uh, uh, first of all, before we go into Impact, what's going on? Uh, a, a, a lot of news, man. A lot, a lot of news. So, so, some stuff. Uh, you, you, I, I'm pretty sure you know. Just being in the mix, or anything. Sometimes you, you write stuff and then you forget it like a couple hours later. And then oh, I, I, just, I, I have no <laughs> idea what I say in private to Braden. What he says to me. Like I think Braden and I are just some sort of one being at this point, and we have no idea what we've <laughs> said publicly in front of millions of people. <laughs> or, or what we said in in our own privacy. So I totally get you uh, with the news. Um, but this is the Impact Show. So uh, I kind of wanted to kick off maybe with having a little talk about uh, Ethan Page's post about mm. that. Um, that, what was it? Karate Man versus Ethan Page. And who, he didn't seem happy with it at all. He seemed like he got duped into something he didn't necessarily want to do and was pretty embarrassed and and that's his kind of send-off from uh from impact uh what did you make of that andrew yeah I, well, well when i first um saw the story you know like the, the, the first thing you kind of really want to do is like actually see it for yourself and i believe it was in a um like a a, a private facebook group or something along those lines that he, that he posted on or it was patreon or it, it was either patreon or private facebook group that he posted it on and um yeah, j- just looking at it, he he didn't seem like he was happy at all. Does it, does it, it didn't seem like something that was like storyline related, or he was trying to you know, like it wasn't anything along those lines. It seemed like he was very very legit and was kind of upset with how things were presented. Like just from reading what he said, it, it seemed like he presented Impact with this footage and kind of you know was uh, banking on them. Uh, I think is the right phrase to e- to edit this and make it look presentable for pay-per-view and you know me me you and nate um talked about it and it was kind of like we all were along the lines of it, it was kind of goofy and to ethan page he didn't want he, he didn't want that to be the entire like i guess pull, pull out from his whole scenario with the karate man and you know how it was presented on hard to kill he thought that the the, the situation in itself was enough comedy and he felt that it should have been more I, I'm, I'm guessing presentable and you know it, it, it didn't come off like that at all i know we like i mentioned uh nate yourself and i dove into that but yeah man it, I, I don't think that's a it, it, it'll be interesting to see if it gets addressed from the impact side i'm interested to see if scott demore or you know somebody within you know that 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 position that high ranking position and impact can address it on one of their um their, their their media calls or you know but I, I think somebody definitely will bring it up to them and it'll be interesting to see how they respond yeah i mean i 
I kind of wonder what he was expecting with the footage he gave. Yeah. Like, one day are we going to get... Like, we've got the Snyder Cut coming out soon. Are we going <laughs> to get this great Ethan Page cut of Karate Man versus Ethan Page where all of us are going to go, wow, we were wrong. Like, I, I, I do feel the, for the guy because uh, I feel he obviously had this picture in his mind and what came out wasn't that. And obviously when he's talking about having kind of family watching it for the first time with him and that kind of stuff That's it does suck but also i'm <laughs> uh, i, I kind of think what, what were you expecting from this kind of angle um but do you have any uh inklings to where you think you're gonna see ethan page go next um mm, uh, man uh... Right, right now, I will say, I mean, he, he can either he can really go either way. I mean, the the independent scene is is, is kind of you know mo- moving, still going, but like it, it feels like it's maybe a little bit starting to slow back down just a little bit, and that and that that's not anything to do with promote. I just think it's just you know COVID nineteen and you know it, it not not being safe to to to, to continuously run, but uh, I, I I can see Ethan Page going to um, AEW. I think that's more of a um, reasonable option for him opposed to him going to WWE. I think it'll be more comedic if he goes to WWE, but I, I, I would say AEW might be a safe bet is to see, uh, as far as what we might see the page next. I mean, this is pro wrestling we're talking about, and as as genuine as I feel those feelings in his comments were, if he is going to AEW, it's perfect fodder for this story we're having right now. Oh, yeah. Which- um, oh, you yeah. can do the whole, <laughs> look, Impact didn't treat you right. Look, look what they made you do on your way out and stuff like that. It it does play pretty well into it. And I think, I think, in, uh, sorry, AEW, if he's not going to be in a tag team with Josh Alexander, I think AEW is probably the right place for him. Um, if he was with Alexander, I would like to have seen that team in NXT. But it seems like Josh Alexander's staying uh, for the time being. Have you got any more news when it comes to Impact or anything else that is kind of too big that's come out today that we should be talking about? Uh, no, no, outside of the stuff that occurred during the show, I'm pretty sure we're going we, we, we gonna to get into that. But I think we could uh, save that more so for the show because I think we're just going to end up come, coming across it eventually. Absolutely. Well, let's get right to it, as John Cena would say, right down to it, I think. <laughs> I, uh, I need to stop stealing catchphrases. I'll, I'll leave him that one. Um, but yes, it's Impact Wrestling, January the 19th, 2021. This is the follow-up from Saturday's Hard to Kill pay-per-view, which saw the big six-man of Kenny Omega, the AEW champion, with the Good Brothers, the Bullet Club, call them what you will, taking on the team of Rich Swan, the Impact Wrestling champion, Moose, the TNA heavyweight champion, and Chris Sabin, from the Motor City Machine Guns in, uh, I, I feel from from everyone I've spoken to, a, a pretty pretty well-loved main event. Everyone seemed pretty high up on that main event. Um, so they needed to follow with a bang. And I think this week's show was certainly newsworthy. We, we start with a little promo package, kind of going through the highlights from Saturday's event. And then we see Kenny Omega and the Good Brothers. They're celebrating in their dressing room. And this is from Saturday night. And Callis comes in and tells them to go back to the hotel to party. He's like, Kenny, I've, I've got some good energy drinks for you there as well. So you can join in. Let's have some fun. And they're all leaving the dressing room. And Callis keeps his hand in the doorway, kind of taps on the wall and turns around and comes back in and does one of those. Oh, hey, didn't see you there to the camera. And says, you just got a chance to see behind the scenes of the invisible hand and the invisible plan. Whilst all the insects are running away, we're planning what's next. And he says that himself and Kenny are going to take a little hiatus for a while as they've got some business in Jacksonville. But not Mm. to worry as the invisible hand will be back. So kind of a a sort of mini write-off for Kenny Omega and Don Callis, it seems, to kick off the show. But that wouldn't be the write-off for this AEW story. Uh, what did you make of this opener? That Kenny is about to start the build to revolution. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that, 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 that's exactly what I... As so, soon as Don Callis said that, I was like, oh, yeah, Tony Khan was like, hey, buddy, 
look, you done had your fun, but it, it's, it's time. We we about like what what were they like five weeks out from revolution, five yeah. or six weeks out He's from revolution. A feud. He needs to, he hey, needs to exactly. Oh yeah, let me ask you that day. Do, do you think that's gonna be the headlining um match I, at, at Revolution? You think it's gonna I be Omega and Mox? So. Um I'm wondering if we'll get a cage match maybe, because we've mm. only had one in AEW and it seems the way they did it with that Cody Wardlow match was really to to keep people from the outside out. Um like a cage match used to be, and it was pinfall only. So I could maybe see a gimmick like that because we already had the kind of street fight in their first match, and then right. the last one was more of a wrestling match. Um, I could see them maybe putting a gimmick on it, but um, I think it's big enough that one on one again will be good enough. But yeah, that that's exactly what I see the the main event being for Revolution. P- P- people in the people in the chat right now clip that because Davey Portman just called it and I want y'all to give him his props when, when, <laughs> when it, when, when, I want y'all to give him his props when it comes back up when uh, when Revolution comes around yeah well I've been calling a Hell in a Cell match between Gargano and Champa for about three years now so <laughs> I wouldn't put all your money on what I say we go to the opening match of the evening it's Eric Young being accompanied by Violent by Design which is Joe Doring and don't call him Cody Dina hey, to take uh, Dave, on Dave, Dave, I'm gonna ask y'all, are you still feeling um you still you still not feeling Eric Young yet? I, I am not feeling Eric Young <laughs> yet, I'm afraid. I do like the name. I think I think this team looks a bit more kind of united now. They've sort of got a, a gear theme going on with the white. Um I think they look a lot better now and Eric Young out of the the world title scene for me is is a good thing. Hey, I, I'm not knocking Eric Young. I just haven't mm. been too interested in what he's done since his return. And I think maybe this uh, this Dina thing is the right direction for him. Um, but he's going to be taking on Rhino tonight, who has Cousin Jake in his corner, whilst uh, Tommy Dreamer's too busy being detective again on this week's show. In, so, in, 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 impact, love these hot openers, boy. Oh, they... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, we'll go into the order of the show later, but I I think we're on the same page here. So Eric Young bails to the outside and Jake immediately rolls him back into the ring. As the ref is looking the other way, Cody Dina hits Rhino in the face. Young follows up with a second rope elbow drop, but misses, allowing Rhino to hit the belly to belly suplex. Dina then gets into the ring as a distraction as Joe During on the other side is working on Rhino's leg, just smashing it against the ring post. And then Eric Young locks in a heel hook, causing Rhino to tap in four minutes, four seconds. Uh, Very quick match. As you said, I don't think Rhino in 2021, Eric Young in 2021 is quite the the hot match I'd follow a a big pay-per-view with, but this is what we kicked off with here. Uh, what did you think of the match, Andrew? Uh, man, in, 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 impact. Like one thing, that I, like it, it's like the the arranging of their show, their match card specifically, not segments. Just specifically talking about matches. It's like they 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 arrange it so weird, man. Because it's like and they have matches that should be on first, and then they have these matches that they that that should be like filler, if if that makes sense. Like in I don't, I don't know what it is, but I, I really wasn't feeling this match. I mean, it, I, I feel like it did enhance um, the, the, the 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 violence by design uh, group that Eric Young, uh, Joe Dorian, and um, don't call him Cody Deaner have going <laughs> on. So yeah, I mean, I, it, it did good for them. Uh, I, I know me and you are probably gonna be waiting centuries for this uh, Jake something push. Uh, so yeah, that, that's all I really much got to say about it, man. Put they they, they need to push Jake something, man. Like come on now. Like, what the, what the hell is going on? Well, it doesn't look like it after this post-match. So after the match, Eric Young won't let go of the heel hook. Cody Dina throws in a chair. And then Dina's holding Jake down as Young and During wrap the chair around Rhino's leg and stamp on it. Um, theoretically taking out Rhino, I assume, for, for a few weeks at least. Um, yeah, I'm with you. This seems to be to kind of elevate Violent by Design more. I I haven't really got that betrayal from Jake or even enough opportunity to allow him to show his betrayal from Dina. Um, Even here, he looked pretty pathetic trying to to help out Rhino here. 
Um, the match itself was, I found, very mundane. Not a hot opener at all. Uh, I'm still hoping this could still build to, with, with Rhino effectively out of the picture, this could build to the big Cousin Jake come back and babyface run we're hoping for. But uh, unfortunately, this, this felt like much the same we've seen every week. It's just violent by the design beating people down. And I, I'm not really getting to that next level yet with them. So, um, you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm going to try to get impact the benefit of the doubt. Maybe, just maybe, they, they don't want to give away the Jake something. Uh, not even a term, but just... That, that evolution of his character away just yet because they are because the Cody Deaner thing is kind of still fresh. So maybe they don't want to just, you know, get, give away everything just like that. So I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt. Maybe yeah. they do got something planned uh, later down the line. It's still pretty early days for sure when it comes to uh, Dina. And I think maybe it's a good thing that we've got this injury angle with Rhino because now the focus, sh- the focus should be Jake and Dina. And that hasn't been too much of the focus so far. So maybe that's the way we're going. We go to another segment shot on Saturday after Hard to Kill. And Rich Swan is backstage being interviewed by Gia Miller. And as Moose comes and Gia says that, oh, I just got immediate feedback from Swan. Um, can, can I get your, your feedback following your loss to uh, Kenny Omega and the Good Brothers? Moose says, I kept my promise. Bell to bell, I'm the best teammate you could ever have. That title you carry around will be mine soon. And he smashes Swan against the door. So that that hot new baby face we had coming out of Hard to Kill, it seems uh, like it was over in seconds, Andrew. Hey, David, let me ask you something. Like, is, is it just me? Or like, did, did you kind of feel... And, and even, even though, you know, we didn't get quote-unquote baby face moves... Did, did did Moose's performance kind of uh, performance at Hard to Kill kind of sway you to his side a little bit and made you think like man maybe they should put the world title on him? I, I still kind of felt like that even at the end of this segment. I, I feel he should take it from Swan for sure. I I kind of like that. I, I think he's just got a presence about him that unfortunately a lot of the roster don't have, and I think there are a plenty of performers that are a lot more talented than him, kind of between the bells, but. When yeah. it comes to that star presence, I feel Moose is really one of the only people that has it from the Impact team. Um, mm. So I think going into this head-to-head, it might be a good idea. And we saw that fire from him on Saturday. And I, it's reminding me, you know, Saturday kind of reminded me of that Survivor Series from 2001, where you had heels, but they're they're playing the baby face because they're going to take out the Alliance, <laughs> that kind of thing. And that's, I, I think Moose in that role kind of works a bit better actually just this he's still a bad guy but he's team impact and that's the jersey he's wearing and um he's going to do everything for impact but at the end of the day he's still a bad guy and i think maybe as a that will catch on more than just trying to turn him straight babyface so i wasn't completely mad again about going straight to this swan feud again but i thought they might let it breathe for maybe a second but clearly not yeah, I I think it was um it it was good for what it was like I I like when Moose added the part in about how he only said he was gonna be he said he was gonna be the best partner Rich Swan has ever had with, from when the time the bell rings to the time is over and then you know I like the real I like the part when he came in and said well you know the match is over so we back to where we were I, I was yeah. like that's a real nice touch right there and it just you know further solidifies uh, Moose's character and his intentions. So we then cut to a Rich Swan promo. Um, he's kind of stood in front of this green screen with a load of changing colored lights behind him. And he's saying that he's going to give Moose the opportunity to prove that he's the best and says he's going to give him that opportunity tonight. We move on and we see AC Romero with John E. Bravo, uh, who they're trying to clear Larry D's name as they believe it wasn't Larry D um, or that he wasn't acting alone. Someone set mm-hmm. him up in the shooting of Johnny Bravo. So they go to Tommy Dreamer and they're they're pleading Larry D's innocence. And Dreamer says that he doesn't want to hear it anymore. And he wants his hat back as AC Romero's wearing his Sherlock Holmes hat still. Romero says that he found ring rust in the, the women's locker room. 
Dreamer tells him, look, you shouldn't be in the women's locker room. And Ring Rust is super over right now. Uh, Ring Rust obviously being the cologne that Larry D was wearing <laughs> and that was smelt during the shooting of Johnny Bravo. And effectively, this Ring Rust turns Larry D into Lawrence D, who apparently did the shooting. Hey, David, what, what's your... Uh... What 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 what, 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 what would be your your um your 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 version of 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 Larry, like how Larry D went from Lawrence Lawrence D? What, what would be your version of that? If you, if you oh, um, we've actually talked about this before. We call um we call Braden Hacksaw the animal Braden because when he when he's on one, he becomes a hybrid of Hacksaw Jim Duggan and and George the Animal Steel. So yeah, yeah. that that is his. Mine, I don't know if I've... Now, are we talking Lawrence D, the lady killer, or are we talking Lawrence D, the bravo killer here? Lawrence, Lawrence D, the bravo killer. The bravo killer. Now, I've never got that far. I've never got that far yet, but what about you? I feel like you might have an alter ego here. Uh, <laughs> they, they they call me Thompson. Tom, or just Thompson? <laughs> you get the Vince McMahon WWE treatment? When you're mad, you lose that first name? <laughs> Oh my goodness, man. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Deep Impact. This is Deep Impact. <laughs> <laughs> so they say that they found fingerprints on the ring rust and the gun and some dramatic music plays to be continued. We go to the Good Brothers who say, how many times do we have to keep proving that the Good Brothers are the biggest draw in wrestling? We proved that we, when we teamed with the cleaner, uh, we do what we always do together. We make worldwide headlines. And the party has been going on since Saturday. We've barely slept, but it doesn't matter. We are going to keep a hold of these tag titles as long as we please. It's a magic killer. A one, two, three. And a two sweet. And Chris Sabin's music hits. Yes, one half of the Motor City Machine Guns. Chris Sabin comes out and says i don't know if you're hung over you're drunk or you're stupid but those mm -hmm. belts belong to the motor city machine guns and neither of us were pinned so we're the rightful contenders and we want a rematch because obviously the motor city machine guns lost uh, the titles in a multi-man tag match so neither shelly or saban were ever pinned to lose those titles and feel they're justified in wanting a rematch but Gallo says, you ain't got no business because you ain't got no partner. Saban agrees. He goes, yep, Alex Shelley, uh, unfortunately, still isn't here. But that doesn't mean I don't have a tag team partner. And out comes for his, what's this, his fifth re-debut in about four months? Yeah. James Storm. His, his re-re-re-re-re-debut. Re it's his re-re-re-re-re-debut, re absolutely. <laughs> um... Storm comes to the ring. He starts putting over all of Sabin's accolades and then says, me, I'm just a beer drinking, moonshine swipping, sipping, Johnny Cash listening, James mother effing Storm. Hey, hey Dave, I wanted to ask you, is James Storm like, because I, I think we kind of probably got the same line of thinking. Like, I, I really think James Storm is like a really believable promo. I don't know what it is. I, I think it just has the... The, the, the voice, like some some people, they have that certain infliction in their voice and when they cut promos that make you believe what they're saying. And then you got some who really don't sound that convincing. Like I've always found that interesting about James Stone. Like he's always been one of those like underrated promo guys for me. I was just wondering what you think. I think he, this might sound weird, but he sounds like he looks. I think there are so many, so many wrestlers. Like That's very, that's very accurate. Like even, Bro <laughs> even Brock Lesnar, he looks like a scary, scary dude. And then you hear him speak and you're like, oh, r really? And <laughs> I mean, that's why Heyman worked so well for him. But I think Shayna Baszler as well. Shayna looks so intimidating. And then when she talks, she kind of sounds like Nelson Muntz from The Simpsons. Um, <laughs> and yeah, and I think James Storm just looks like the guy he is and i i completely believe that this guy uh kicks some ass and then drinks some beers so yeah I, I like his promo i think it's i think it's pretty solid and especially him kind of uh toe-to-toe -to -toe with dallows who who i kind of see as the same kind of guy um just two big beer drinking dudes uh, rednecks yeah, yeah 
the, 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 those, those are the same dudes. I yes. promise you, they're the same dudes. <laughs> so Storm says, "You don't put fear in your opponents." And then, a big shock. Out comes returning to Impact Wrestling. Matt Hardy comes out with Private Party. Obviously, he's he's kind of their their managers at the moment over on AEW. And yeah, what what was your initial reaction before we go into the promo? Initial reaction to Matt Hardy and Private Party coming to Impact Wrestling. This was a very very pleasant surprise. I'm glad that this move was made. Like I remember, like at the beginning of the Impact AEW thing, like you know when we all were speculating about what was to come and you know what could possibly happen. I always felt like. Having people, for, for, specifically speaking from AEW's perspective, I felt like the best thing for them was to, would, would be to have the talents who you don't have regularly featured on Dynamite and the talents that are kind of all the, the contracted talents that are kind of always featured on Dark more, more so than they are Dynamite. And you can have them kind of get that get those reps in on Impact's program. And I always thought that was probably the best way to go. And I'm glad to see it. I hope we get to see Top Flight. I hope we get to see so many different titles that aren't regularly featured on Dynamite and then they can kind of, you know, make their way back onto Dynamite in a regular spot, but kind of do that through Impact. And I think this was, you know, a, a, a real pleasant surprise and I'm, 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 I'm excited to see where they go from here. I'm 100% with you. I think especially right now when there aren't really those indie shows that you can be going during the week to try and get some reps in. Um, this to me kind of felt like... Um, when NXT would send guys to re to evolve, to work mm. a bit more. And I think Private Party mm. are... You can see the promise in this team. Uh, you can see the charisma. You can see their moveset. But for me, I've been pretty critical of them because there's certain things that aren't clicking. And maybe that's to do with kind of the lack of reps, as you put it. So I think Private Party are actually the the perfect team to to have that impact for a bit as well because... They're, they're known enough, they're on Dynamite enough that they feel like a big deal. Um, it's not like you're just sending Serpentico, for instance, or someone who's yeah. just always on Dark. Um, they're, they're a team that have beaten the Young Bucks, they've challenged for the tag titles, they've had a lot of kind of big opening matches and stuff like that. People are, are aware who Private Party are, but they're also yeah. a team that could do with those extra reps. So I thought this was um, a great choice. And and I am still hoping to see to see more of this back and forth uh, down the line. So you, you, I, I was going to add, like you, yeah. you want to know one thing that I really didn't that I really did like about this. I like how Matt Hardy's return didn't take away too much from Private Party, you know, their debut. Because I, I, I feel like I, I feel like normally that could happen just with any wrestling promotion or any company, like when. Uh, a star who was there who had a great deal of success returns alongside maybe somebody who um, is debuting for the first time. They kind of take away from it for a little bit, but I like that D'Lo Brown and Matt Hardy, I mean D'Lo Brown and uh, Matt Stryker didn't to put too much spotlight on Matt Hardy's return, even though Matt Hardy is a big name to come back to Impact Wrestling, but I felt like they kind of primarily kept the focus on, A, that's private party from AEW right there. You know, they beat the Young Bucks, you know, they did this and they did that, and I think that was a real solid job from the commentary team. I think it actually really worked having Matt Hardy in his new gimmick, the kind of agent role, because it's, yeah. it's not a part he played on Impact. If he just came back as broken Matt Hardy, it would absolutely take the attention away. Yeah. Um, and also the lack of crowd there. Uh, it, took, it actually took me a while because I'm not a long time watcher of Impact, but obviously I'm familiar with the Hardy boys. We're in Impact for quite a while. But it, it took me a while because of the lack of crowd and because the focus was on private party for me to go, oh, yeah, Matt Hardy hasn't been an impact for a few years and he was quite mm. a big deal there. Um, so I thought they you're completely right. I thought they balanced it all pretty well to have private party as the focus here. Matt Hardy says that I represent these men. Tomorrow we have a huge match against Matt Seidel and Top Flight. And as there are, quote unquote, open borders we can have a warm-up match i feel that's the first time we've heard that term open borders when it comes to aw and impact i think it's it's something kind of the iwc have been using a lot but it, it's kind of cool to finally hear a talent say open borders here um he goes back into his character and he says that he gets 50 percent of their 
income because he, they're working for a different ca company and that's the deal. And then he'll get 30% tomorrow. And Storm interrupts and goes, look, this is a private conversation, not a private party. So <laughs> Matt goes, oh, I'm sorry. Look, they are too inexperienced to talk to you. I put Impact Wrestling on my back and you wouldn't have a job here if it wasn't for me. I saved Impact Wrestling back in the day. And Matt says that his guys, Private Party, should have a championship match as him and Jeff never actually lost the championships. They just vanished in some teleporting thing, he says. Uh, so that's his gripe. So he wants his boys to get a, a shot at the title because him and Matt, him and Jeff never really lost them. Um, Gallows then says that uh, the two teams in the ring are never going to be the Impact Champions as long as they're holding it. And they suggest that there'll be a number one contenders match to main event tonight. It'll be Private Party versus Chris Saban and James Storm. A uh, pretty solid segment, I thought. Um, you've got the surprise of AEW talent on Impact TV and setting up to a match where actually I, I was kind of interested with both outcomes. I would have been interested with Impact getting a win over AEW and Storm and Sabin challenging. But I'm also interested in uh, in Private Party winning this and continuing that story against Impact. So I thought they did a really good job with this segment. Yeah, I, I completely agree, man. It, like, I, I think there are, like, again, specifically speaking about this, like the tag team division now, I feel like you're, you're, you could open a, a, quite a few doors w with this. And, you know, I, I know we spoke about it in the past about the women's division and, you know, the doors that could open. Like, there, dude, there's a lot of, like, moving pieces within this thing that really haven't been moved yet. And I feel like we now are about to get into the tag team shift a little bit. So I'm, I'm, I'm very excited about what's to come. Me too. Me too. I think it's a good step. We see Matt Cardona, the former Zack Ryder, backstage. He's being interviewed by Gia Miller. And he says, I'm not here, surprisingly, with a chip on my shoulder. I'm here to prove my fans and myself right. He had a job, he's often out. <laughs> That's what yes. he had to do. <laughs> so we then see Tasha Steeles and Kira oh, Hogan, the baby. brand new knockout <laughs> champions. Are you okay there, Andrew? Davey, they, they, I'm pretty sure you know why I'm after, you know. <laughs> you, you, you know. Go, go ahead, Dave. I'm going to let you finish. Go okay, ahead. all right. So Tasha and Kira are backstage, and they're arranging this this celebration, this party, the Fire and Flavor Fest. And they've gone to Tennille Dashwood and Caleb with a K, and they're trying to sell them package tickets to get kind of front row tickets to this event. And Tennille's like, ah, Phil, this is kind of dodgy. You're kind of duping us here. So they walk off. But Johnny Swinger, <laughs> your man, comes behind Tasha and Kira and says, oh, a discount. I can get a discount with you two ladies and I can, I can have you both in the ring at the same time. Yep, that's what he says. Um, they're like doing the whole, ooh, oh, I think we've sold out the tickets thing because they're not into Johnny Swinger, this this dirty old man who's always perving on them. But he says he's got money and reveals his glittery fanny pack, which, if you remember, was the fanny pack with the stolen arm wrestling money that seems to be going on. This thing's being passed about more than COVID, I swear, this money. It, this has been a story for far too long. Um, but, yes, uh, Fala Bar then comes in and says, we all know Swinger has the money. And then Brian Myers comes out of the elevator and thinks this is all stupid, all this dumb money stuff. And he squares up with Fala Bar and says, do you want to step up and get your head knocked off? I'll see you in the ring. Um, this this kind of was all over the place to me. I thought, I, I know we're a big fan of Johnny Swinger here. I just, <laughs> I felt this was the wrong thing to do with your your brand new knockouts champions. I feel you either do the kind of celebration thing tonight or you have a match or something. I think it really undermined their win and put them more in this comedy category. And 
the, this story with the with the stolen money that's hopping around all the mid to low talent it's it's just it's it's ran its course now and to set up eventually this whole segment was to set up a match between Fala Bar and Brian Myers it, it just seemed all over the place this kind of sort of reminded me of that waiting room segment the other week with Britt Baker where they were just trying to kind of do too many things in the same segment D- does that make sense Andrew yeah no, I, I get what you're saying so uh I got two th- of course two things on this segment uh with first starting over the swinger see I I, I would agree with you if um th- this was the first interaction between these three Tasha Kiera and Swinger but we've seen them doing this in the past and Swinger trying to mess with them and you know tell hey you guys want to mess with the swing man like the, <laughs> that dude's a clown bro but like I, I I would agree with you if that if this was their first interaction but I've seen them in these interactions before and you know it would you know again it wasn't the first time so I kind of wasn't that thrown off bad but i do kind of get what you're saying like them coming off of their uh you know historic title win them being the you know the knockouts tag team champions and you know i, I you you should want to kick that title reign off on the first the first show back with like a a big big night maybe a title defense against a you know one of those makeshift teams that you just throw together just to give kier and tasha like that kick start to their title run so i do i i, I do get what you're saying on you know on that on that aspect but i i think that you can still, you know, keep the elements of Kier and Tasha's like happy party type, you know, but can be serious, very serious in the ring type of characters at the same time while still, you know, keeping keep keeping the fun elements of their character that they display on social media as well. And then on um the Brian Myers follow by segment, I actually really enjoyed this, like specifically their their interaction. Like I really did like it a lot because I I felt like they kind of just let follow do him and and actually speak like a human being and he sounds very convincing when you allow him to just speak mm. and like actually sound like an everyday human and that's why that's when i was kind of looking at the segment i was like hmm that, 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 that was cool right there i like that little segment and brian myers didn't do too much like it wasn't like a bunch of yelling and screaming it was just like hey you know you, you think you're tough so you can beat me in the ring and it was like literally that simple and yeah. i enjoyed it i think it was i, I think that was probably one of the best like spotlighted segments for follow by because it was short quick and just to the point i mean sometimes that's all you need to do just be like i want to fight you in the ring now <laughs> which is yeah. essentially what it was i i yeah i just thought it was too much in in one go here for me uh and i agree with you i absolutely do not want to see kira hogan and tasha Steeles lose their personality um because that's such a big part of what i love about them i just felt timing um i think these seemed like a comedy act if you were just tuning into Impact tonight. Um, what, 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 what would you have been more like keen to the segment had the show started off with Kira and Tasha coming out right out of the gate and, you know, possibly get picking up a title win and then, you know, them transitioning to some along those lines with a segment with Swinger? Yeah, or, or something in the ring that makes it right, feel a bigger right. deal. Even, even if it's this kind of thing, but in the ring, I think it feels a bit more important than let's just fill a couple of minutes with these these two because it should be it should feel a bigger deal than that they're your they're your brand new tag champions Mm. we go to kimberly and susan the the artist formerly known as sue young and Susie, uh taking on jordan grace and jazz now for for people who may have not watched the show or have kind of fallen out of impact and are just getting back into it can you describe susan for me Susan is a a multitude of things. She is Sue Young, uh, she is Susie. Uh, but 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 basically, I, I'm I'm uh, for for those of you who have not seen Impact, uh, Sue Young is basically um what what was her nickname? The Undead Bride. Mm-hmm. Uh, is kind of a zombie type character, and you know she kind of you know she she got involved with a uh, Father James Mitchell, and you know from from that she kind of converted into this just uh, run of the mill uh, America's girl, very smiley and you know peppy 24 7 and just oblivious to anything other than what's in front of her and then you know she has transitioned into this susan character which is uh, a modern day version of what most people refer to as a karen and i'm pretty sure everybody knows what that is yeah. but i don't think you really need that in much explanation about that but yes yeah, susan is uh is in a care in the karen role right now but i i did want to say man she is a 
very, very talented wrestler. Like, I don't think she really gets her flowers for how good she is in the ring. Like, she can fit a multitude of roles. And I, 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 I don't know why, like, that just hit me for some reason. I was watching that show. I was like, bro, she is, like, a really good wrestler. She is good. I feel with her sometimes the character gets in the way a bit too much. I think I think she's very good at playing the characters, but at times she allows it to kind of take over from the quality of the wrestling because she's too focused mm. on playing the part, which, which is great because I'd say the reverse for other people. Like I always used to say for as Finn Balor, whenever he was the demon, he didn't wrestle differently enough. <laughs> he was wrestling um, the same. <laughs> but... I don't know, there's a fine line with these really over-the-top gimmick characters um, where at the end of the day, I'm I'm here, I enjoy the wrestling the most at the end of it and I feel at times she could maybe pull back the character a little bit to just show off how good she is in the ring because as you said, she's great. So the bell rings and Susan and Kimberly jump Jazz and Jordan right away. Uh, Grace and Jazz then reverse an Irish whip and throw Kimberly out of the ring to gain control. After commercials, Kimberly has her legs wrapped around the waist of Grace and tags in Susan, who um, is very much by the rules. She's making very clear that she's holding the tag rope here as she gets tagged in. And she's wearing essentially like a like a women's office suit to wrestle in here. Mm-hmm. Grace goes for a muscle buster, but Susan fights out. We get a spin kick from Kimberly. Grace starts fighting back with chops, but soon gets grounded. Then Jordan Grace hits a big, big boot, a back elbow, and a clothesline before getting the tag to Jazz, and Susan also gets tagged in. We get Jazz from Jazz as Susan is struggling to take her office jacket off. We have double knees to the back of Susan from Jordan, a Vader bomb, and then a DDT from Jazz for a two as Kimberly breaks up the pin. And then as the ref is distracted, Diona Parazzo, who's on the outside, strikes Jazz with the knockouts championship. And Susan rolls up Jazz and wins in six minutes, 18 seconds, plus commercial breaks. Mm. Hey, I, I, wanted, I wanted to ask you, uh, one, one spot during this match that really kind of caught my eye. Um, and, you know, I, I, I got I, I started tuning into Impact more consistently, I would say, over the last uh, five, seven weeks or so. Mm-hmm. Like, has, has Jordan Grace actually hit the muscle buster before? Like, on, like, on, like has she, I, 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 like, I, I've seen most of the Impact pay-per-views, if not mm-hmm. all of them, but I, not, not most, all of the weekly shows. But, like, have you ever seen her, like, actually hit that muscle buster? Like, when I saw it, I was like, oh, damn, she about to really pull that out. I'm I'm trying to think maybe against Diana, um, mm-hmm. maybe someone in the in the Twitch room because uh, we are live on Twitch right now, twitch.tv slash up next podcast. Little plug, um, yeah, maybe someone in the Twitch room can correct. I I can't think of it off the top of my head, but possibly against Diana. But it's a hell of a move, and it is. But I, I always is. feel Grace has too many of these these big power moves because her her finish is pretty impressive as well. I think adding a muscle buster to the mix as well deadly um what did you think of the match andrew i i, I think it was a uh, you know it was a, a you know fun little match um I'm, I'm glad to see jazz back i'm glad that she's not you know because i i think most of us kind of assumed that after the uh maybe the genesis show that probably would have been you know her you know salute you know for her short stint there but you know i'm, I'm glad that she's sticking around and obviously she was at the tape and so you know She's probably gonna be around. So she is gonna be around for the next month. So yeah, I'm glad, I'm glad to see that back. Um, I, I think all four of them work really well together. Uh, I think they are probably heading back to the uh, maybe Grace Perazzo uh, again. Yep. Yeah. That but I, I think you know, like like we mentioned before, I think this might be t- I think this might be time to insert the AEW Women's Division just a little bit. And again, like like how me and you got into it earlier about um, you know people having reps that don't really get featured on Dynamite. I know there have been a lot of complaints about AEW's women's division and them not being featured on Dynamite regularly. A, you literally, David, you literally have it right here, bro. If you want these reps, what better position than right here? It's like literally right there, bro. I I, I agree with you. I think um, it would benefit so many of the women to be working with a lot of this talent. Um, yeah, Jordan Grace, Diona Parazzo, especially Sue Young, um it, it would definitely help out and and help that AEW 
roster. Well, yeah. Braden and I scratch our heads every week when we're doing uh, our AEW reviews because we we're so confused why every NWA women's match on it on Dynamite is pretty great, and, and they, they kill it. They, they kill, kill it. it. So they've got the talent. <laughs> it's just, I, I think. I think that shows how good Serena Deeb is. I, bro, I think Serena, bro, she is a beast. She's so good. And being able to work with this uh, greener talent, I, I think she's great. And I think that's where someone like Jordan Grace and Perazzo can can really help out. Um, yeah, I think maybe Grace, Perazzo down the line is the logical move. That they're, they're your two right. best women, really. But we have seen it a few times. I wouldn't be surprised if we see Jazz get a shot whether it be on tv mm. or one of the kind of impact plus pay-per-views i think there's a nice little story you can tell there being kind of jazz's swan song uh one last time going for it and especially with diana striking her with the title there she's got I'm, I'm, justified beef I'm I'm, I'm I'm gonna make a quick prediction here brain i mean i, I just called you brain oh my That's goodness right. no, with, i told uh, you with the same person <laughs> <laughs> no, for, for, forgive me david but I'm, I'm gonna make a quick prediction right here the winner well, well, you know what? I'm, I'm going to call it. I'm going to say Britt Baker gets the win over Thunder Rose at Beach Break. And then we will see Britt Baker challenge Deanna Perrazzo for the Women's Championship. I'm calling it the Impact Knockout Championship. I'm calling it right here, right All now. All right. Calling well, it. When would that be? Heel versus heel. Wow. Yeah, heel versus heel. Heel versus heel. Um, ah, see, what, as, far, as far as when it might take place. I like I I can't keep banking on Revolution because that 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 card is getting played out. Can't keep mm-hmm. saying that. I, I I I would say that 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 would be better suited for an AEW Dynamite slot. I would say that. Like I don't beach know who break or I something like that. Yeah, yeah. I I think if they like if they because I mean, uh, I mean they, they they got some weeks until you know Revolution. So m- maybe sometime after that, possibly that that could happen, and they could do one of those um. The little weekly specials that they do, you know, when they have breaks in between pay per views, yeah. like maybe it could be a headliner match for that. Yeah, I, I can see that. I think it's the right move. Um, I think it would definitely just help both companies. I think it would give give Impact that bit of a bit of that kind of cool AEW rub, uh, yeah. but also genuinely help the AEW women's division. So I'm with you there. Uh, yeah, realistically, the tag teams aren't the the ones we should be focusing on because. Both divisions are pretty good. Um, we go backstage to Taya Valkyrie, um, who says Ooh. that uh, Susie, um, sorry, Susan, Diona Parazzo and Kimberly are the three dirtiest players in the game. So she has to play dirty. This is obviously coming off of her loss to Diona Parazzo at Hard to Kill. Then Johnny Bravo walks in and says that Taya sprayed Larry D with the ring rust that made him shoot Bravo and Dreamer and AC Romero are there and they say that they found tires prints on the gun and on the spray and Tyre admits it she says she didn't approve of the relationship between Rosemary and Johnny Bravo and the only regret she has is that she didn't finish the job um so admitting to attempted murder here savage 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 security then come and ty is questioning where are they taking me and maybe one of the lines of the night he (laughs) says well if you're lucky you'll go to this uh kind of jacksonville penitentiary but if you're unlucky we'll take you to the deep dark depths of a stamford penitentiary and then Johnny but, uh, Bravo but, chimes but, in but, with, I hope she doesn't go to Baltimore. So what, what, what was that line that Dreamer had? He was like, you, you might get a two-year two deal with a, with a one-year option. Yes. <laughs> <Something> like <that. laughs> so just taking <laughs> shots at WWE there, obviously kind of making Jacksonville, which is uh, AEW seeming like the, the bright spark. But I know, I know, you can go to never- the big leagues and be unhappy. Or yeah. just whatever you do, don't go to Ring of Honor. Is what yeah, I would say. I say I know Dream ain't never getting back, getting invited back for Legends Night ever. <laughs> um, yeah, pre- pretty fun, fun lines here uh, to get kind but, but, of us buzzing. Yeah, but, I was about to say, but yeah, Taya, man, that's the that's the story. That's the story coming out of this. I, I know. Um, we, yeah, we we talked about this on a Hard to Kill um 
the Hard to Kill post show. Me, you, and Nate, we got into it and we did like a eight minute conversation about like what like what is there left, what what was there left for Taya to do in Impact? Like genuinely, like it was she she's done everything. I know um both both PW Insider and uh Fightful had their respective reports about you know um did this being her you know send off of sorts and you know I think everybody's kind of you know waiting for her to acknowledge it but i think we can all kind of you know read the writing on the wall as far as how the segment played out but yeah man it's it uh, tanya got options man like she very very talented in the ring obviously i think you i think you can never go wrong like just looking at that from a marketing perspective like if i was running a wrestling company like you having somebody on your roster who can appeal to um several different demographics Mm -hmm. like i think that's very key she's bilingual so you can apply her to the market in Mexico, you can apply it to your US, like, you, you know what I'm saying? Like, that. that's very valuable, bro. Yeah, I'm, like, I was always surprised that, um, <clears throat> at least when I've been watching, they haven't played that up too much on Impact, right. because you would think that is is so valuable. You've got, yeah, um, bilingual, talented performer who can talk as well. Yes. Um, you can throw her in stupid comedy stuff, or if you want her to be serious, you can have her serious. Um, I, I see her being like an asset to wherever she goes. I, I personally you, you, you think see, she's gonna go to WWE. I lean towards WWE. I yeah, think. I was, yeah. And I, th- <laughs> I think she'd actually add to that Miz and Morrison <clears throat> act, which have got very stale for me. So yeah. I could see her going right, right to the main roster and being with them. Yeah, I, I definitely think they'll probably need like a little, like a little shot in the arm, like with her being there, like depending on how you know, of course, she gets presented. I, I I feel like I, I feel like she could be of assistance to the NXT women's division. I feel like that like that that could be something like r- really nice for them to just have, have her there and yeah. her experience. And not saying that people there don't have because that that women's division is great. But um like I, I definitely think her being on the Raw women's division and uh you know the, even though that's kind of you know weird sad like I think we can all point out the criticism with that going on like they they their current champion right now hasn't defended her titles and Lord knows how long. So, mm-hmm. you know, that's, that's a whole nother subject, but I, I definitely think if Taya or two goes to WWE and they pair her with Morrison, I feel like that could do great things for Morrison. Cause I feel like Morrison is like a two, like he like a week away or some from taking a spear from Goldberg. Like <laughs> some Morrison is about to become that guy. So yeah. I I, th- I definitely think that, you know, him having Taya there could really do some wonders for him and they can play up that whole, you know, could kind of be something similar to what The Miz and Maurice were. Yeah, I, I think <clears throat> it could definitely help the act and whether it's you split Morrison away from Miz. Um, but you're right. He's definitely kind of the number two in that pairing there. And you can just see him being chow for Goldberg yeah. in the next few he, weeks. He, he's, he's heading that territory, bro. Yeah. I'm telling you. So this was the write-off for Taya Valkyrie. You then see Rosemary, who comes up to her, and they have a heart-to-heart and a hug. Taya says, Rosemary's like, why didn't you stick to the plan? And she goes, Bravo was a monster. I had to get rid of him. As the security are trying to pull Taya and Rosemary away, and they run to each other for one last hug as Taya is dragged through the doors. And... Crazy Steve turns up and Rosemary asks, is this why we don't have friends? It never works out. And she asks Steve if it frightens him. And he says, no, it excites me. Mm. Um, hey, they, 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 no, I was going to ask you, Davey, like, oh, you, you go ahead and finish real quick. No, I no, had a no, question. go ahead. No, I, like, so, I, okay, so everybody know, okay, this is Deep Impact, but, you know, we all talk about professional wrestling as a whole. Like, I, I just wanted to ask you, like, so go, going back on Tyre, right? If if you are in a position of power in AEW, how could you possibly not try to do everything in your power to get her on your roster? And just how many you had the talk about, you know, AEW's women's division maybe needing more experience and that being the only thing that is, quote unquote, holding them back from TV time. Like even Kenny Omega, he did an interview uh, today and he was talking about how um, he's hoping for AEW women's division to get more time and they're you know, they're training and, you know, nobody in the division has lost their passion. Like everybody is still grinding and, you know, hoping for more TV spots and they're all, you know, but I, I think it just more so comes to like that. That's just their nice way of putting it that they, they, they feel they may feel that they're not experienced enough 
and and I feel like um like I mean well the only way for them to get experience is that for you to put them on TV and you know they either gonna swing or swim and that's with anybody you know but the, like specifically speaking about Taya like how do you if, if you know she's a free agent I would be doing anything I can to get her on the roster because that's a boatload of experience that you can bring in and add to the women's division. And it, it, I, I was kind of saying the same thing about Jazz. I was like, man, if I was in if I was in a position of power right there, I would be like Jazz, Ty Valkyrie, dude. That's that's like how many years of combined experience right there that you can pass on to the you know, the people in your women's division. Like that's that's a given right there. Yeah, I, I think you're completely right about the way AEW sees their own division with the experience. You you only have to go back to that women's tag tournament they did last year, which ended up being on their YouTube channel. YouTube channel, because, yeah. Because and and you, when you watch the show, you you understand why because it the it wasn't very good, and mm. but these people do need to get reps. You're not you've got to practice to be good, and I'm, you've got to do that in front of people. So I get yeah. it. Um, so I think you're right. And also just how entertaining would it be for for Tony Khan? You you see the way he throws his money around on impact. <laughs> just he bailed her out. He bailed her out of prison. He you can get a you can get a kind of phony Jerry McDivitt and take a little jab at WWE there with how they've got the best lawyers and whatever and you you could literally have the character just walk in being bailed out and now being exactly. on AEW. I think could be pretty funny. That's, that's, that's a good call right there, actually. You you might you go 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 trademark that, Davey. Trademark it. Well, speaking of Tony Khan, <laughs> we see Tony Schiavone, who is at the AEW Control Center, and he's saying, "You are looking at AEW production here. This is a real studio." And I'd like to introduce my boss, Tony Khan. And Tony comes in with a very special guest. He is there with Jerry Lynn, also making his Impact Wrestling return. And he says, Tony Khan says, we're going to watch Big Money Matt with Private Party. He says, that's going to be a great match. Uh, They then show highlights of Private Party from uh, all their appearances on Dynamite. And Khan says, we're going to show why AEW is the best in tag team wrestling. And then they highlight all of tomorrow's matches. For Dynamite, we have the Inner Circle tag team match. We have Hangman, Page, and the Dark Order versus TH2 and Chaos Project for Minus One's birthday celebration. We have Cody Rhodes versus Pretty Peter Avalon. Penelope Ford versus Layla Hirsch. Miro and his butler will appear, obviously being Chucky T., and John Moxley in action. And then also tomorrow will be Matt Seidel and Top Flight versus Matt Hardy and Private Party, who we'll be seeing later. And Tony goes, Matt Hardy, why is he here? Well, it's because I asked him to come. The question is, can I out Carney impact? And Khan says, no, because I'm a nice guy. Hmm. But Matt Hardy is a Carney. He's a big shyster. All I care is AEW being dominant dominant, and us looking good. And we're here to scout and try and find some new good performers for AEW. And then he pulls out a couple of bills and says, look, I've paid for tonight's advertisement and I'm going to pay for AEW to have more advertisement next week. And the camera pans out to show that they weren't actually at an AEW studio they were at Impact Wrestling. We see all the Impact production. Tony Khan is in the Impact Zone. He definitely is. Tony Khan was at the Impact Wrestling tapings. That was very, or, or, or maybe that was, I mean, well, yeah, that was at the Impact tapings. I was about to uh, say that maybe that was at a pre tape at Hard to Kill, but it couldn't have been. That was at the, um, the recent tapings that they did. So that is very interesting. And it, 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 I think it only solidifies that, you know, maybe it's something else that AEW got up their sleeve uh, as far as the, you know, the collaboration uh, at Impact and, you know, who else we might see on that on that show. So, yeah, that's a it's pretty, pretty exciting deal for Impact, man. I'm, I'm interested to see how, you know, because like, I don't know if you noticed, Davey, but like Impact has been doing like some real solid numbers. Like they've actually been like in the in the, um, the Nielsen ratings, I think, or the, you know, that I've been seeing. Right. So, and that, yeah, and, and they, they really haven't been featured or haven't been have been charted in a minute like in a long time so like it, it's been cool to see them on this little uptick man so like, i think this is good business for impact 
uh, especially having you know Tony Khan on the show when he doesn't even regularly appear as a character on there on his own show. So you know, I, th- I think that's a cool little gift for Impact. We go to Rich Swan, who's in the ring, and says, "I thrive under pressure. I left my heart in the ring, just like Sabin did." And although Moose said he was gonna kind of play fair. I have trust issues, and that was always in the back of my head during that six-man match at Hard to Kill. And I know Kenny isn't in the building right now, so for the first time in a long time, I've actually got time to focus. And Moose, you have my attention. So he calls out Moose, who makes his entrance, and Moose says, I know you're angry. People tend to make bad decisions when angry. These decisions tend to make me angry. You know what I'm capable of when I get angry. Just ask your friend, Willie Mack, who obviously Moose took out in the I Quit match very recently. He goes, you want to settle things, but nothing will be settled until I get an Impact World Championship shot. And Rich Swan's like, well, why, why do you think I called you out here, you big dummy? I'm here to give you a shot. And let's do this right now. Moose goes, nah, nah, nah. Not on your time. We do this on my time. And then he goes, sorry. Swan goes, okay, your time. That works. But right now I want to fight. He jumps Moose. The two start brawling. Moose soon comes back up. He starts fighting back. He goes for a spear in the corner, but Swan moves and follows up with the second rope Phoenix Splash. So ending the segment, Rich Swan standing tall over the number one contender, Moose. I thought this was pretty short, sweet, straight to the point. Both guys sounded good and we're heating up this championship match. And I feel this is definitely the the biggest match Swan has had as champion. Yeah, um, yeah, but I don't think I can say it any more better than uh, than that. I think, you know, they, they I, I'm, I'm very, you know, I, of course, I still big fan of Rich Swan. Like, I think he has had a very successful run um, as Impact World Champion. You know, runs, relax, run with it with the Impact World Title. But I think they, they really, you know, they, they, they're building up Moose really well, man. And Moose got a lot of momentum behind them. So it's gonna be interesting to see what they do. I think they should put the title on Moose, but you know, you can't go wrong with Swan either. It's it depends the order where they do everything because I think people are still expecting a Kenny Omega Rich Swan match at some point. Yeah. Um, or do you just completely pull that and go with Moose? Man, see that, that that's the difficult thing. Like I, I, I feel like at this point, like since, like, see, see with, with these type of things, like especially because the because Swan took the pin clean in the main event of Hard to Kill and got pinned by Omega, I feel like it would have been like a real cool kind of story to show this like downfall of the character Rich Swan where he just can't get it together after this win like it's just been it, it would have been so difficult for him to to for him to be represent Impact as a world champion and then having been pinned clean by the AEW world champion and it just goes downhill from there and like maybe that see that, that now see that's the interesting thing that you just brought up that's a real good point like d- does that could that downfall of the character begin with Maybe with with him losing to losing impact title to Moose, or would it be um, better to drop that to Omega? Like it's it's an interesting little dynamic. Yeah, because, right I there. think we talked about this at Hard to Kill. Whether you do Swan to Omega and then Omega to Moose, yeah, maybe. Yeah, that yeah that that, that would be cool. But I, I think either way, man, you like, you really can't go wrong, honestly. And then and then, and then at that is always um you'd always have the option of. You know, building. I mean, you, I think that's still what they're going to do anyway. But you can always have the option of Rishwan coming at the bottom, and then you know he just rises right back up. I think the very fact that we're talking about the options is a good thing because I think yeah. for so long I'm watching Impact and I'm scratching my head who's going to be a viable contender or even champion a lot of the time. So I think it's pretty cool that right now we we see that there are options there. It shows they're making steps in the right direction. Mm-hmm. We go to Scott Demore, who's backstage, and Rohit Raju barges into his office. Rohit is mad because um, Manic is clearly TJP, and TJP comes into the room Boo. as dressed Boo. as TJP, <laughs> holding the title. And Scott 
Demore just says that TJP couldn't challenge, but Manic could. But of course, they're the same person. He's basically saying, who cares? We, we know this is a dumb story. TJP is the champion. Fucking deal with it, Rohit. Um, Rohit wants what's owed to him. So in two weeks time, Rohit Raju versus TJP is made. And Rohit walks out celebrating. And Scott Demore just goes, oh, that's funny. He thinks he's getting a title match. So we're getting a non-title match in two weeks. Rohit versus TJP. Um, I really enjoyed that three-way on Saturday. And I've really enjoyed Rohit's work over the last few weeks. But it, uh, sorry, the last few months. But I think it's time to sort of move in the different direction. And I, I think this probably will be a blow off in two weeks between these two because they've been going at it for quite some time now. Yeah, I, I think that's the right the right call, right? I definitely think this is going to be the blow off. I, I I did like the segment and how they kind of just made Rohit not 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 necessarily make him seem crazy, but like make him kind of in and they made him look foolish, I guess, in, in a way that didn't hurt his character because it was just like, look, look, we we all know it's CJP. Like you you're the only person that here that actually cares about it, mm. and uh, that was kind of like a funny little thing. Even though uh, I just gave TJP props, Jesus Christ! Hey, cut that out, cut that out, <laughs> mate. cut that out. Bro. But but nah, man. Uh, yeah, Rohit. Um, I, I've really been enjoying his work, just like you said. And uh, yeah. I, 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 but the, the thing is about the about him moving on. Like I'm curious as to what they do with him next. Like what like, like what could you do? I feel like he's been doing some of his best work, being involved in the exhibit and title picture. So to kind of remove him from that is, I, I think it's gonna be kind of tasking for them. Yeah, yeah. I, I'd like to see him in some sort of role. He He's someone who sums up what I was going on about Susie, Susan, Sue Young earlier, is he for so long was that kind of Heath Slater character who was just a jobber and was wrestling like a jobber, you know. And the more he got into this character uh, over the last few months, the more he's been playing it, but also... Showing off, he's a really good wrestler as well. I really enjoy watching his work. And I think he's got the right middle ground now of playing this character, but can still go when that bell rings. Uh, so it would be a shame if if this is just him out of the, the X Division picture and what he's going to do next. Maybe, I don't know, do you pair him with someone? Do you, it's, you're just in that no man's land then of kind of your, your Brian Myers division. Yeah, and, and even um, like just hearing um interviews that Rohit has done, he doesn't seem like he's very interested in doing the whole tag team thing again because he like literally just got out of that and he's been in that for so long. And I feel like now is at the point where he's kind of just very, very happy on his own. Like, of course, he was doing a singles run on the independent scene under his other name, uh, Hakeem Zayn. So, but I, I think it kind of felt more good for him to be able to do this and impact. So. Like I, I I can't see him really being, I'm I'm not saying he's gonna be one of those dudes that's gonna be like, oh no, I'm not doing that. Like I'm pretty sure he'll take whatever he, you know, getting to try to, you know, make the best of it. But I just can't. I, I just don't think him being out of the X Division title picture is gonna be good for his character overall. I feel like he's gonna kind of flounder and you know, um, just be in the mix. Yeah, I completely agree. That's my worry too. We go to Kira Hogan and Tasha Steeles who are in their dressing room with Alicia Edwards. Uh, they're sorting out this this celebration, the the Fire and Flavor Festival that'll be happening next week, and they're trying to find out what Alicia is kind of good for, um, which I've asked myself sometimes. Um, and they go, "Could you maybe be the MC?" Sorry, sorry, just she's <laughs> she's she's terrible. Um, sorry, um, but so they asked maybe she could be the MC, and they're like, "Oh." really alicia edwards the mc and then the referee comes in and they get him to close his eyes and they tell him all about the fire and flavor festival and they say about how they're going to bring the finest food from atlanta in for it and they're asking how big he wants his package to be so a good old dick joke in there as well for you on your tuesday evening and so they're going, does he want to sit ringside or or you can get the platinum package and you can be right in the ring with us. And they're talking all about this as Havoc and Nevaeh come in. And soon enough, Kira and Tasha change their tune and they're going, oh, no, everything's sold out now. We've ran out of tickets. Nothing left to sell. 
And then they say, well, actually, there's one more package you can get. And it's at home where you can watch with your cat on the TV. Um, again, I, I love these two. I think they're great. But I thought this was pretty horrible here, Andrew. Uh, yeah, could could, could could have deal without this for sure. Couldn't deal without this. It's You just got Nevaeh and Havoc looking awkward standing watching on. Um, they should have attacked them. They should, yeah, they needed to do something. Instead, they just stood there and breathed heavily. Um, also, the camera work was terrible. This looked awful, and this is just a a stationary shot of these people. I don't understand why the camera work was so shaky. Um, this this looked really uh, amateur. I thought, unfortunately, um, which. And I love these two. We've sung Kira Hogan and Tasha Steele's praises so much on this mm. show, but wasn't a good first impression for me as tag champions. Yeah, look, look, looking back at uh, our conversation earlier, uh, d- definitely think that Kira and Tasha should have did something in the ring. I, I, I think it would have just it, it would have alleviated what, what we think of this current segment that we're talking about now. If we would have saw them in action earlier, and you know, at least they would have. Had a win of the day bells before we dove into the whole comedic route. Yeah. Um, so we've got the Fire and Flavor Festival next week. I'm expecting Havoc and Nevaeh to ruin that. And we'll probably get a rematch down the line between those four. We go to Gia Miller, who's backstage with Ace Austin. And she asks him what happened at Hard to Kill. Austin says, it was a tragedy. Um I'm the best, and I was forced to sit on the pre-show panel watching a fading Josh Alexander. And he was always the weekly link in his team. I tried to insert myself in the X Division Championship match, but then Matt Cardona came because he was bored of being paid to be in catering. And people don't pay to see Cardona or Alexander. They pay hmm. to see me. So Josh Alexander comes in and challenges Austin to a match and says, and I I thought this was a great line, I'm the guy who makes sure you never reach your potential. He shoves Austin, so Madman Fulton jumps Alexander from behind and then Matt Cardona runs in for the save. Um, This sets up a tag match for next week, Ace Austin and Madman Fulton against uh, Matt Cardona and... Josh Alexander. Uh, I'm I'm kind of curious about what we were saying about Alexander being positioned as a babyface seems weird, but I do enjoy his matches and I am more curious in an Ace Austin, Josh Alexander feud than I am a Matt Cardona, uh, Ace Austin feud. I don't know about you, Andrew. No, 100%, man, especially because I don't think uh, Cardona signed, so I don't. I definitely don't think if you if they are planning to have Ace Austin lose to Alexander, it definitely shouldn't be somebody that's not under contract. I don't think that's a. I don't think that's a small move at all. Mm. But like, um, yeah, man, I I really like that Ace Austin promo. Um, I, I feel like he does need to go on a win streak. Like he he has so much momentum, man, coming out of that uh Super X Cup, and I felt like they kind of took took that down just a little bit with the Cardona thing, Cardona winning by DQ and stuff like that. I feel like we could have just let, left that match at a segment or left that interaction at a segment and it didn't have to go into a match between the two at uh at Hard to Kill. But yeah, man, uh I think the the the, the tag match next week is gonna be a good one. And and I really did like the uh I like the Josh Alexander promo too, man. Like I think Yeah, we, me too. Yeah, I think we've always seen him as the you know, the background guy. Like he's the muscle in the group, always just standing there and you know, you look angry. And you know he can go in the ring, but like um, for the, like people people uh, that haven't seen Josh Alexander like on the on the independent scene, like highly like highly recommend you go check out this stuff. Like he was um he was an AEW AAW heavyweight champion, and he did like some really great single stuff. Had some you know some solid backstage promos that they shot for him. Like I know he he won a bunch of titles on the independent scene as a single star man, along with his uh, success as a tag team. So I I know Josh Alexander like knows how to you know conduct himself or not even conduct himself but you know present himself as a singles as a single star so i'm, I'm interested to see how he kind of you know navigates this coming out of the north i, I like it, it's, it's kind of funny because like coming out of this segment like you kind of like I, I like when i saw him speaking like when i saw him in interact interaction and stuff like that i was like I, I really didn't even think about the north tag team at all and i think that's a good thing that's how you want to kind of transition out of that 
Yeah, I kind of hope he changes his look a bit so he doesn't look like he's half of the North. He can mm-hmm. change his gear a bit or new music, that kind of thing. Um, but yeah, I, I I think this should be a pretty solid match next week. Uh, Ace Austin's a great promo. I think he's someone I'd love to see on Talking Smack or Raw Talk, like that kind of environment, because I think he's someone who is probably naturally very good at just improvising and cutting a promo on the fly that that's the impression i get from him yeah um, he knows how to talk shit he knows how to talk <laughs> shit exactly uh you you're learning from the best andrew i'm guessing <laughs> <laughs> we get a recap of the barbed wire massacre match from saturday between eddie edwards and sammy callahan and a banger a banger Sorry? davy a What's banger that? it was a banger it was a banger yeah <laughs> no i'm lying i'm lying People i just did that to 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 nerves. like that match um <laughs> I was we, not a fan. We weren't too hot on it, but uh, <laughs> I saw some comments in the the Impact Twitch room today. Uh, people seem to dig it. We have a doctor checking on Eddie Edwards. And, oh, I've completely skipped over a match, haven't I? Myers and Fowler. Yeah. Oh, but, yep. When was that? Okay, Brian Myers, Fowler Bar. <laughs> okay, so we have set up earlier tonight. Brian Myers goes to the legs immediately, but Fowler Bar's too big to be taken down. Um, Matt Stryker gives this fact that where Brian Myers lives, they've ran out of face masks. So Myers just started selling his own ones and up the price because he's such a heel, this professional wrestler here. Uh, Fuller Bar hits the leg drop. Uh, Myers jumps off the second rope and gets caught in a belly to belly for a two count. Uh, Bar hits some splashes in the corner, followed by a Samoan drop for a two. Then Myers comes back with some fists to the to the head but doesn't affect the big guy uh falabar goes for his kind of no 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 pose but myers kind of moves forwards to sort of pretend he's got poked in the eye by accident and as the referee is checking on myers eye myers hits a low blow to falabar followed by the clothesline one two three myers defeats falabar in four minutes 13 seconds Man, I, you you went nowhere, bro. I, I'm like really, really happy for uh, for Fala, like, cause I you can kind of see that he really took the steps to, you know, uh, cut weight, and you can you can like really see it, like he's like really slimmed down and like toned himself out. Like I think that's real cool, and I, I, I like even at just from a personal perspective, not even on professional wrestling. Like I think that's that, that's real cool to see him, you know, do that, and you know, want want to want to uh take take those steps so that, that that's real big now so congratulations to follow man and, it, and it, it's showing in his in ring work like you can tell just seeing him over the past few months like he's really been you know uh, up in his ante as far as like stamina and you know stuff like that so yeah fa- follow yeah, I'm, I'm i'm happy for him man just on a personal note so yeah shout out to follow yeah the the match itself didn't do a whole lot to me for me i think myers looks so much better in this all black gear now ditching the the kind of blue and orange he was wearing before uh, the finger poke spot was kind of cool, um, but I'm still not sold on that clothesline, especially a, to the guy, a guy the size of Falabar. Still, still not really buying the finish from from Myers here. So, um, well, you, you you remember what his finish was in WWE? Did he ever hit it? <laughs> <laughs> no, not really. Well, do you remember it? I, did he have one? I mean, he must have won a match at some point, right? No, bro. Hey, no, Davey, bro. You you remember when he went on like that 200 match losing streak? This is true. Yeah. Yeah. I, don't I think, was there I don't when he ever... broke it against really? Revival. Oh, oh yeah, Mania. Oh yeah. yeah. I said so. Yeah, I, I don't think he ever. I, I think him and Zack Ryder had like a tag move. I don't think he ever had like a a singles singles Chris move. Chris Elliott I... in the Twitch room says his finisher was the hot tag to Ryder. Jesus. <laughs> um, Chris, Chris. <laughs> and he ended that streak with a roll up. So. Yeah, maybe he's never had one. Oh, oh, here we go. Here we go. The Hangman's Face Buster, apparently. I've um, never seen him hit that, ever. But yeah, he needs to do away with his clothesline. It, especially against a big dude like Falabar. Okay, you've got the low blow in it. Just, as I said, it's it, it's not a Stan Hansen lariat. It's just a clothesline. How, how, how long has he been doing that? For or a few impact. weeks now. He He's used that as a finish for, for a couple of months now, I think. And it, okay. it just doesn't really click. Now so, I, I, I was I was going to ask like was that like a um a tribute 
to uh, to Brody or not, but I, I know you said he's been doing it for a few months. Brody, especially with the way their taping schedule went, I think it was right, 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 a bit before. Okay. Um, we go backstage. A doctor is checking on Eddie Edwards and suggests us that this would be a good time to cancel all future barbed wire matches. Then Myers comes in because he wants his eye being checked, and the doctor's like, "Nope, you're absolutely fine." Uh, Myers then insults Eddie Edwards and calls him basically a backyarder. So Edwards says, how about next week? This backyarder shows you what pro wrestling really is. So Brian Myers, Eddie Edwards is added to next week's show, which also includes Fulton and Austin versus Cardona and Alexander. Joe During versus Jake, uh, sorry, Cousin Jake. To Neil Dashwood versus Rosemary, and we get the fire and flavor fest. Man, uh, it, it, so this so this is Myers' his, uh, new character now. Like he's just that guy that's just gonna walk around picking fights with everybody. I, I kind of like it I actually. Think so. Like I, I think he just I, he walks around and is a dick to people. Like I, I like the like I like the segment with uh with Eddie Edwards. Like I, I'm like if this, if this is what Myers is gonna be doing. Like it's like and then the thing is not like he's being like forced in a certain position like this kind of just works like he's like you know i'm gonna just walk around and just be an asshole or whoever i feel like it like if you in my way then you know nine times out of ten I'll probably end up fighting you so i, I kind of like it yeah i just i can't really see where this character's gonna go because i don't see him as a world title contender at all he's not an x division wrestler and and none of his feuds have really caught fire right now so sure he he can do this thing for a bit but if they're really going to invest in him, um, I don't know. Or is he just there for people to have a chance to work with? I, I don't know. I, the whole Myers thing hasn't been working for me, and I can't really say an Eddie Edwards match is particularly um, thrilling to me. <laughs> him versus Cardona going to open Rebellion. Probably. You're probably <laughs> right. You're probably right there. Um, again, clip that. We'll see if it comes true. <laughs> but we go to the main event of the evening. It's Chris Sabin and James Storm taking on AEW's Private Party. Um, I don't know if you noticed this, but Private Party actually came out to Matt's theme. And yeah. even on the kind of uh, sort of title card that comes up, it said Matt Hardy with Private Party. So I think they're just kind of little details we're going to start seeing with everything Matt is getting as their agent so obviously his music playing his name being introduced even though he's not wrestling in the match um Bro, some I, little I touches was, like I, that I, I quite appreciate you know i was gonna add like i think that's a great point you brought up like i thought i i, I think it's going to end up doing wonders for private party in a in a long game because i feel like it's going to make that turn when they not not turn but well, not even turn when they finally dump matt and let him go because they realize he just you know, just screwing them over this whole time. Like, I feel like it's going it, it, it's going to add a lot to that, you know, that moment when it happens. It's starting to grow, grow on me. The stuff on Dynamite hasn't really worked on me yet. But in this different setting, I actually thought, uh, I actually quite enjoyed it this week. Um, so we'll see where that goes. But Cassidy and Sabin start off the match. And they're very evenly matched to start with. Both go for a drop kick at the same time. And lightly tap hands showing each other a sign of respect but this annoys matt hardy on the outside who's yelling at isaiah cassidy james storm then takes on both members of private party they attempt the silly string but he catches them but cassidy is still able to counter into the ddt and that is when tony khan shows up at ringside with jerry lynn and throughout the match they're just Taking notes, they're, they're scouting, it seems. Private Party try and team up on Sabin, but Sabin comes back hitting the Tornado DDT. It's, I call it the Johnny Gargano DDT. It's where you run up the other guy, taking them out as you hit the DDT. Follows up with the clothesline in the corner, and then he does the run-up DDT off of Storm's chest onto Mark Quen for a two-count. Uh, Storm then hits Quen with the lung blower, and then a leaping neckbreaker to Quen, but Cassidy comes back with the trouble in paradise. We see Hardy yelling some more at Private Party. Sabin and Quen start trading blows. Cassidy holds Sabin in a kind of, it looks like he's setting up for a monkey flip, but holds down on the jaw, so he's stuck there. 
as Quen hits a shooting star standing. Thought that looked really cool. And then we get the Fosbury flop from Quen to Storm. Matt Hardy distracts the ref as Jerry Lynn grabs the ankle of Chris Sabin, allowing Private Party to hit Gin and Juice and pick up the win in 14 minutes, 18 seconds. Man, like the one. Okay, so Jerry Lynn getting involved in this match, obviously Tony Khan having that ringside presence, and then be, obviously being at the uh, the Impact Wrestling tables is just making me wonder. And and, and it's just, we, we of course we're gonna get into that, but like the the match, the, the match itself, I think it was a real solid match. I think that was a, a a good main event match, man, and I think it was a nice little um, build at the end um, towards Private Party and uh, versus Gallows and Anderson uh, whenever that happens. Uh, do you, would you prefer that to happen on the Impact show, or would you prefer that to happen on, on Dynamite? I mean, I'm obviously, I mean, well, it's, it's probably gonna happen at the Impact show. Like, I mean, well, I don't I know what that. Well, yeah, yeah, because um, I, I, I keep forgetting that Impact is uh, they they take their shows a month month out in advance. So, right. Yeah. Yeah. So it it, it it probably happened already. It's probably gonna happen like two weeks from now, or something like that. But yeah, Jer- Jerry Lynn getting involved and Tony Khan being at the tapers, man. That's that's very that, that's gonna make for some interesting television over the next couple of weeks. Yeah, I, I think I think with this set of tapings, they can learn from stuff from the last set and hopefully plan it out a bit better. So you you promote that match against Gallows and Anderson and hopefully get a few more eyes as it's AEW talent. I, I'm not saying that Private Party are Kenny Omega, but I still think there's that curiosity of will AEW take the tag team titles from Impact? Mm. Um, so I think you will get eyes on TV for that. And then if you can cut a few more angles and interesting matches on that show, you might have people stick around. But I'm with you. I thought this was a thoroughly enjoyable main event. Um, good showing from a Private Party. I questioned kind of the order of the show. I think you they should have opened with the Good Brothers coming out and Saban and Storm and then Private Party. I think that would have been a really hot open to the show instead of eric young and rhino that just seemed bizarre to me order wise uh but yeah i thought a really solid match and i think this is probably one of the better impacts since this AEW involvement i i think top to bottom one of the most enjoyable ones because we've had other ones with bigger angles but then the rest of the show kind of left a lot to be desired i thought this was really solid yeah, it, it was a solid show. It was a uh, smooth watch from you know from top to bottom. You know they had a couple of little, a couple of little rough spots there, man. But I think all in all, it was a it, it, was, it was a good show to watch, and it didn't you know it, it didn't feel like two hours. I think that's always a symbol of a good show when it kind of you know goes by. You know, yeah. So I, yeah, I, I think it was a good show, man. And Impact they're doing they're they're, they're doing well, and uh, I, I know they probably got a few surprises up their sleeve. Um, you know, for the for the rest of these tapings, uh, uh, what's the name? ODB was a part of the um the tapings, so okay, you know they get they cool. yeah they they got another vet back, so nice. yeah, we're gonna see interesting to see what she does uh in the women's division. Mm. So after the match, the Good Brothers come out to square off with Private Party, but James Storm jumps in and they all start brawling as Tony Khan and Jerry watch on. Uh. Yeah, I, I I thoroughly enjoyed this episode this week. I thought it was, uh, as you said, moved really quickly, uh, told some more story. I'm interested to see maybe we get the Good Brothers attack Private Party tomorrow night or or some more crossover. I, I would like to see eventually impact talent because I don't really I don't really count Gallows and Anderson because you all know he, they're buddy buddy with AEW mm-hmm. anyway. Mm-hmm. I, I'd like to see some actual impact talent on dynamite soon for them to make their strike but uh i i really enjoyed this week i thought it was pretty decent they said that, that, that like you mentioned that gallows and um gallows and anderson with AEW, like it's it, it, it's like hindsight like, and not to dive too much off the top but it's like just hindsight being 2020 like how different things could have been because that um i, I know one of the one of the matt nick jackson said that that moment when it was him uh, him, his brother Kenny, um, and, and Gallows and Anderson on Dynamite. That was supposed to be the ending to the first episode of Dynamite, 
So right. that it, it, it just makes you wonder, like, you know what I'm saying? When you see stuff like that and, you you know, you, when you get into these conversations, it just makes you think, like, what how, how, how different could shit be right now if, if that was the, you know, if, if that was how it planned out. But, you know, I, I, I think it, you know, kind of worked out for the, you know, for the better, just for more interesting aspects. But, yeah, man, this was a this is a good episode in Impact. Um, I think they did a good job and, you know, they, they got to keep. Um, ho- well, hopefully, you know, throughout the, what they tape, they, you know, the momentum could keep going up. And, you know, even when we talked about the um, the Gallows Anderson uh, versus Private Party March, like maybe um, th- this is a thing that kind of gets drawn out a little bit. And maybe they it was just um, four, four, four or five weeks worth of tapings of just build. And then maybe we get the uh, maybe we get the match between them on a Dynamite episode once uh, the, the impact tapings are uh all kind of ran through uh, for for the month, so I, I, th- I think that'd be some that could be an option too. It, it definitely seems like it's gonna continue for a while with the the Omega symbol being on mm. rebellion. Yeah, sorry, we're building to rebellion and revolution. This is gonna get very confusing. <laughs> the April Impact pay per view, we'll call it. Uh, so it, it feels like it's gonna go on for a while, which is is good. Long term storytelling, Andrew. Uh, what would you give the show out of ten? Mm, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go seven point five. Seven point five. Wow. Well, we put up feedback on forum.postwrestling.com every week for Deep Impact, and you lovely viewers gave it a six point seven five. So pretty solid. I think that's more than double what Raw got yesterday. So mm-hmm. pretty good going for Impact. And and Ra- let's Ra- take Ra- some me to sleep now. Uh, we start with Andrew from Cape Breton. Impact Tonight felt like probably one of the more important shows for the company in a while, even with the Kenny Omega debut recently. It was a fresh start to the new cycle before the next pay-per-view, and it's great to see the roster starting to beef up a little bit. A lot of shows with Impact had issues of needing to fill time with flashback moments of the week, and not just the ones on the Twitch stream. Private Party coming to Impact is also great as they are a team with potential but need some work. I think more up-and-coming stars from AEW should come over as it benefits AEW with them getting more ring time and benefits Impact with keeping the shows fresh. One issue I have with WWE is their repeat matches every week due to smaller rosters. Highlights of the night was Ace Austin burying Matt Cardona and seeing Tony Khan and Jerry Lynn play the roles of Vince McMahon in Pat Patterson from Memphis in 1993. Also, Chris Sabin made fun of Jerry Lynn for being old back in 2007, so he finally got his comeuppance. Six out of ten show. Uh, do you have feedback open, Andrew, or shall I continue? That was that was some great feedback, right? There. I just want to say that I like <laughs> I, I, I like what he said. Or yeah, she said he said I, I didn't hear the name, but my bad. I it apologize. Andrew. There we go, Andrew. My Cameron. apologies, Andrew. Yeah, but that that was some great feedback, sir. Yeah, c- kind of said what we said, but in in less time so well done (laughs) we go to chris elliott really enjoyed tonight's show much more than i did the pay-per-view on saturday private party coming out was a hell of a surprise and we got a decent match in the main event tony khan turning up was fun and i get the feeling he wants to emulate vince turning up in memphis in the early 90s well spotted guys hopefully they keep this going as it's interesting to watch Ty's write-off wrapped up the shooting angle nicely and dreamer's lines about where she'll end up were hilarious Commentary was good and a hell of an improvement over Josh Matthews and Madison Rain. You guys were talking about how unprofessional that fire and flavor, havoc and Nevaeh segment. It was shot and lit so badly you could see the shadow of the boom mic on the wall. Yeah. Mm. Fix it, guys. It's not hard. Not that my lighting's great on this Twitch video, but come on. <laughs> come on, people. You got money there um right well that brings us to an end of this week's deep impact any final thoughts andrew what have you got coming up any plugs the floor is yours my friend uh, i appreciate you uh you having me on brother and i definitely will be back on in the future to come join you talk some impact uh i think you got a great thing going here of course we got fir- firstly and foremost before anything man because you know i'm such a gentleman we got 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 to plug the up next games coming up man it's getting real, ladies and gentlemen. We heading down to the nitty gritty. It's almost crunch time. Uh, for so go subscribe, go 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 get on uh, my good men, uh, Davy Portman and uh, Braden Harrington's Patreon, and get ready to go support them, man. They got some good stuff going on. 
But yeah, you can follow me on Twitter at uh, 80 times underscore underscore. We're going to be conducting some interviews this weekend, man. Uh, we we, we going to see who is with. I'm going to save that for the surprise, but going to be uh, putting some interviews up over the next couple weeks to promote some shows, man. So I'm, I'm looking forward to that. And uh, yeah, uh, you go subscribe to the Andrew Thompson Interviews YouTube channel and check out my written work on the post wrestling site. And yeah, if, if you guys haven't given Andrew a follow on YouTube, yeah, why why not? This guy interviews everyone. He is the future. Um, the the work you put out, Andrew, is is phenomenal, and all the stuff you do, your your reports on the post site are just so in depth. You, I think I listen to a lot of wrestling podcasts, but you seem to cover absolutely everything. So, uh, it's been really nice uh, the last few weeks being able to record with you as well. Um, so. So thank you, and uh, I'm I'm really looking forward to your your upcoming interview with the winner of the Rumble game because my friend, <laughs> it is not going to be you. So get your mic hot, Andrew, because you're going to have to be interviewing someone very very soon. January twenty eighth, we've got Way in the room, chatting chatting some oh, shit. Oh my goodness, man. Um, <laughs> yeah, January 28th is the Royal Rumble game. We're still filling up those places. North American champions on the Patreon. We're going to be opening up to you <laughs> in the next couple of days. World champions, get back to me. The, the, the window's okay. closing, guys. Oh, um, yeah, quick, quick. I'm about to say, quick plug, David. Everybody go get your votes in for the um the post wrestling rumble uh, that they got up on the site, that John and Wade got up on the site. That's a, uh, that's a cool little game that they got up, man. So, yeah, go uh, get your votes in for that. And, Vote who you think is gonna uh, win the Royal Rumble, surprise entrance, and all that, all that good stuff, man. So fun little participation to be a part of. Absolutely, yeah. Join join the Rumble pool um, on the post wrestling site. I love doing them. I love doing the G one game. I get very competitive. Um, so yeah, I, I'm very much looking forward to that. Join the Facebook group because I think there's some talk about doing a kind of Rumble pool as well uh, that can go live when we're doing our watch along because we'll of course be doing a watch along uh of the raw rumble at twitch.tv forward slash up next podcast so join the facebook group it's uh up next podcast join that and we've got so many shows coming up this week tomorrow lunchtime on this very feed we will have john Ceno evil hey. with a new episode of shot in the dark where Ceno. he'll be talking all about tonight's aw dark two hours long i believe Two hours long, that episode, Dark. Crazy. But <laughs> as well as that, 205 Live, NXT UK, ROH, New Japan Strong, you name it. He watches Jesus. it and talks about it all in 15 minutes. Shot in the dark tomorrow at lunchtime. And then tomorrow evening, 10.15 Eastern time, I will be back with my usual partner in crime, Braden Harrington, for Up Next, our flagship show where we'll be talking all about NXT. Uh, that'll be live on Twitch, twitch.tv slash upnextpodcast1015 oh, yeah. or you can get it wherever you get your podcast by just searching up next. But, but before, before we get off, Dave, I wanted to ask you, man, I know you uh, you and Braden uh, record up next uh, weekly. I wanted to ask you, like, what did you think about the uh, the debut of uh, Wes Lee and, and Nash Carter, man? What did you, what'd you think? You think they're going to win a Dusty Classic or that's a far stretch? I, I think they should be finals, maybe. Um, mm. I I don't know if they'll go as far as put the Dusty Classic on them, um, right. but I'm very happy to see them there. I'm a big fan. Not a massive fan of the names, but maybe that's something that, with time, I'll like. But so the, the so the, the names are actually a spinoff of uh, Rush, Hour. Rush Hour. I don't know. Right? Yeah. So like I I think that was like a cool thing maybe in a way, but I, I don't think like everybody like everybody universally is just gonna understand like with like what that is so i think maybe they could have got better names but i mean it, it seems like more of an inside thing more than anything i mean that's cool but yeah right you've, always <laughs> got to do, you've got to do the closing call at wrestlemania right if if you can go like oh my god wesley is your new wwe champion <laughs> come on wesley no, no. <laughs> Uh, I know what they're going at, and it, it suits their characters, I guess, but we'll see. Um, yeah, so NXT tomorrow night, and then join us again on Twitch, 1pm on Thursday 
for BD Elite, where Braden and I will be talking all about this week's AEW and comparing and contrasting with the Wednesday Night Wars, saying which one we preferred. Then we've got our top five episode on the Patreon, patreon.com slash up next. That's coming out this Friday, where we'll be talking about our top five favorite Royal Rumble moments. Mm. And then this Sunday, we'll be joined on the Patreon with Jason Hagholm, one of our hey. world champion patrons, to talk all about Royal Rumble 1995. It's Rumble season, which means it's almost WrestleMania season. It's one of the most exciting times of the year for wrestling fans, and we have a lot planned. Follow us on Twitter at Up Next Podcast, where we'll bombard you with everything that's coming out. Any final words, Andrew? Go subscribe to to my guys. Uh... Davey and Braden's, uh, their Patreon and their Twitch channel, man. Go show them some love. That's all I got. Awesome. Thank you. Well, thanks again, Andrew. We're going to get out of here now. Thank you to everyone in the Twitch room. If you don't mind staying around, we might raid another wrestling room to spread the love, as we say. But from me and Andrew, take care. Be safe. Ahoy! This is the captain. Brace for impact.